Corporation. Testimony of Olga, aged 19, as transcribed and translated from her testimony September 1996. This testimony is so powerful that when we first saw it, even though it was in a foreign language, it brought tears to our eyes. It is so real. The Spirit of God comes through the language barrier. Pray as you read this please, dear souls. Note from RepentNow.com Olga's visit to Hell's entrance. Peace to you, dear brothers and sisters. Right before I came here, I had a revelation. The Lord said that this church is waiting to be whipped. I don't know why your church is waiting for this. Before I start witnessing about what happened, I want to open Zephaniah 114-18. The great day of the Lord is near, it is near, and hasteth greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wastiness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities, and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men, that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as the dawn. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. I beg of you to open this book when you get home and read it to your children. I am reading these verses because the Lord told me to do this when I witness. Her background, I'm from a Christian family. I've been in the USA for two years. But I backslid from the Lord after I came to America. In Russia, I was in a good church which believed in lots of prayers. It was a different kind of life, but when I came to America, the freedom tempted me to backslide. In the beginning, you couldn't tell that I was falling, but later on, you could see it more and more clearly. I felt like I had fallen, but I went to church anyway. I sang in church and prayed, but I felt so empty. People would ask me, why are you so empty? Later on, little by little, Satan led me to places where it was very easy to forget about God, so I completely fell away. I just stopped going to church and praying altogether. To make matters worse, the brothers and sisters in the church stumbled me very much. This caused me to fall all the way. Right now, I'm only 19 years old. One month and a week ago the Lord called me back to Him. But I tell you, not everyone will have this mercy as the Lord showed me. Some people will try to receive a revelation from God by praying a lot. But I didn't pray at all and I even spoke against God two times. Other people, who have spoken against God, have been in hell for a long time because the Lord took the Holy Spirit from them as soon as they spoke against Him, or complained against Him. Let me tell you how it was that I spoke against God two times. Whenever I was stumbled by Christians, I'd say, Lord, if you are righteous, make these people fall three times more than I. I told him this for a long time. One time when I was in a prayer meeting, the Holy Spirit spoke and said, if you continue on this way, the Lord will take his Holy Spirit from you. When the meeting was done a brother came up to me and said, maybe Satan won't receive you either, because you're so bad. Hearing this was very painful to me. Yes, I had backslidden, but how could a Christian come and speak to me that way? I went home and cried. I said, Lord, take the Holy Spirit from me. I didn't understand what I was saying, because if he had taken the Holy Spirit from me, I would have perished forever. Satan would have taken my soul and destroyed my flesh right away. My dear friends, if you have the Holy Spirit, count the cost of how precious this is. He's a great gift. When Jesus comes for his church, the Holy Spirit will lift you up from the earth. However, I spoke against God and said, take the Holy Spirit away from me. My heart had become very hard and I wouldn't forgive. I began to hate the brothers and sisters. I viewed them all as evil and not good. I didn't see their real faces, because I couldn't see how evil I was in my heart and how hard my heart was. I didn't pray or read my Bible for a long time. Before this time I would have wanted to be on my knees praying, but after this, I had given up. I felt like there was something wrong with me, but then I'd say, oh well, whatever happens, happens. My mom and dad told me, don't get your eyes on people. Just go to church. However, I couldn't be humble. How her visit to Hell's entrance started. One day it was around 1 a.m., or maybe 20 minutes before. A sister in the Lord came to visit me and we talked for a while. 
This sister was always trying to encourage my faith. She told me, don't look around at others. Go to church and pray. Instead, I argued and went against her. Soon the discussion became centered around my judgments, the pastor isn't right. This brother or this sister isn't right, etc. This sister finally told me, I'm leaving now, but you're invited to come and watch a water baptism tomorrow. I told her that I wouldn't go. But she said, no, let's go. However, I still wouldn't agree to go. She told me goodbye and I saw her to her car. I then went back to my house, I lived alone. I was thinking, I'll get a drink and go to bed. I went into the kitchen and started to pour myself some water when I heard someone knocking at my door. I assumed it was probably the sister who had been visiting and had come back. Otherwise, who else would come at 1am? I just opened the door nonchalantly. I didn't look at first. I just opened the door. When I looked, I saw a man standing there. He wasn't an earthly man. He was as tall as the entrance of this church's building. He filled my whole door. He was very tall and beautiful. But his face, you've never seen a face like this before. I want to describe what he looked like. He was tall and young. His face shone like a light bulb, so very bright that it was a blinding light. When I looked at him I was blinded. When I looked at him again, I couldn't see him because he was so bright. The light shone from him like glory. Then I looked at his face again and he looked like a man. He had on a long white robe, which was very long. I couldn't see his feet, only his hands. The robe was closed about his neck. I didn't see his hair. The light came to his shoulders. His robe was white like you've never seen on this earth. His hands were soft and white. He came into my home and said, peace for you. But I, brothers and sisters, couldn't say anything. I just stared. This was real, not a vision. I was very scared because I'd never seen anything like this before. This is the last day of your life. He said, soul, this is the last day of your life. I tell you, when you hear this voice, you don't want to die. Maybe many of you have asked to die. You want to die, but when you hear this voice, you don't want to die. You all of a sudden understand that your life hasn't been with God. When he said this, I started to plead with him. I don't want to die. I'm only 19 years old. But, I had heard these words so I thought, it's all done for me. I don't have another chance to repent. I begged him for life, but he said, no. Come and see where you're going. I saw everything start to spin. I couldn't see my house anymore. I felt myself rolling in great darkness. I couldn't see a tunnel, but as I rolled, I felt like years passed by. I couldn't see anything. Then I found myself standing on a road. The wide road. I want to describe this road. When I stood on the road with the angel, it was very beautiful. What amazed me were the flowers. I didn't know their names. I'd never seen flowers like this on earth. Every flower had its own aroma and they were so beautiful. I paid so much attention to them that I didn't even look to see if the angel was still around. I didn't look at him or have any desire to talk to him because of the flowers. They captivated me because they were so beautiful. They were full of aroma and the air was so nice. I savored this. We walked and the angel was silent. We walked quietly like this for a long way. This road, with flowers everywhere, looked like it went very far. As we walked, people began to appear that were walking the same direction on the road. When I came near them, I recognized my church and my youth group, even a lot of old people. Brothers and sisters, I saw other people's faces that I'll remember the rest of my life. If I see them in life, I tell them that I saw them on this road. I ask them why are they going to the end of this road. Even though they're still alive on earth, they're in sin and going on this road. As we walked I saw lots of people, Russians that I knew, believers who knew God. I noticed a pastor who was reading his Bible chapter by chapter, verse by verse. People were walking on this road in groups and talking. I thought, interesting, he's reading and they're not even listening. They don't care, he just read on and on. He didn't stop. I was thinking, oh, it's good he's reading the Bible. I saw many faces that I knew and many I didn't know. When I came to a certain point along the road, I gave all my attention to the end of the road. Even at the start, I had noticed that something wasn't right, because I noticed smoke rising up from the end of it. Now I saw black smoke. 
I heard crackling and voices that were yelling and crying for mercy. Brothers and sisters, I can't describe to you these voices. Even to this day I hear them and how they cry. I could hear the crackling. It was a very hot fire. It was very far away, but I heard it clearly as I came closer and closer, until I came to the road's end. This smoke burned my body. It wasn't fire, it was just smoke. I'm 19 years old and I stood close to hell for 3 hours. Even now, one month and a week later, my body feels lots of pain, but now I have less pain than before. When I was coming here to speak the Lord said that this church is waiting for a whipping. Oh brothers and sisters and you, you're so young and nice. Fear God's whipping, I wasn't beaten by whips, but I stood for 3 hours on the edge of hell and the smoke covered my body. Even today it's hard to sleep and sit down because it hurts so bad. I feel better now than before, but when the Lord touches you with a whip, what can you do? You who have small children, it's better to freely give your life to God. The Lord said you're waiting to be whipped. This means that you are not living according to the word of God. Be fearful, I'm afraid, even now my body is in pain. I can't touch my body very hard. I can't squeeze anyone's hand hard, because I was burned. When I came to this edge, I wrapped my arms around myself. I thought I wouldn't make it because it was so painful. When the angel saw how it burned me, he came to me and put his hands on my shoulder. When he put his hand on me, my body was the normal temperature. At this moment I quickly turned around and faced the road, with the canyon to my back. After I had turned, two persons appeared. Jesus and Satan appeared. I don't know who has seen Jesus Christ, but I want to describe how I saw Jesus and how I saw Satan. Firstly I will describe Satan, he was not tall, but very fat. His body was covered with short black hair. His fingers were very long, every part was covered by hair. He was very scary, his face was evil looking. His face had the look of wanting evil. He had no teeth, only fangs. He had a very big mouth and very deep holes for eyes couldn't see them. When I did see his eyes, they looked like a cat's eyes, full of evil. I didn't pay attention to his feet. I know he is very scary, and he noticed me. I wouldn't look at him because I was so scared. I turned myself to the other person. I didn't know it was Jesus, but I had no strength to look at his face. I wasn't worthy to look at his face. He is light. The light here on earth is nothing compared to him. He was much brighter. He was just light when I looked at him. He blinded me, he was total light, I tried to see him anyway. He had a long robe on, I didn't see his feet. His robe was different than the angels. I want to tell you that God's men, the angels, are all the same height. Jesus' robe shone like a shimmering mirror, but the angels were just white. I didn't look at his face, because I wasn't worthy. I wondered, who is this? When I looked at his hands, there were holes in them, both hands had holes in them. These holes stay forever in him. When you go up there, I know Jesus will show you his hands and he will say, Child, I redeemed you, but how did you go and spend your time through life? I don't know sisters, I see lots of youth here. At this particular time, I had no makeup on, but I don't know how I would have stood there before Jesus with makeup on my eyes. I did stand before Jesus in pants, not a dress, and I couldn't look at his face. I was so ashamed, I felt I was helpless. However, I had an opportunity to serve God and I could have lived for God. I knew this and when I realized this I put my head down. I was so ashamed. I looked at Satan again and saw lots of stuff on his body. You know how Americans put lots of holes in their ears, sometimes eight. This was how Satan looked, lots of earrings. He had lots of jewelry, makeup, and necklaces fastened on him. I had this stuff too. I had everything you could imagine. But when I saw this I thought, I can't make it. I never realized that Satan would have all this stuff. I was so scared because I had all this stuff too. Satan has this stuff and I had boxes of this back home. I've spent hundreds of dollars on this and I see that Satan has this. I didn't think the Lord would give mercy to me because of this. I thought, my end is hell. I'm worthy to go to hell. I didn't serve God and Satan had all this stuff. He stood there so prideful as if he wanted to do evil. He walked around on the road through the people. Everyone on this road took something from Satan. They just tore these things from him and put it on themselves. I remember thinking that he wouldn't have enough for everyone, because they wanted so much, but he had enough. 
My little sisters and little brothers, today Satan is offering this to you. He says, take it. It's not a sin. However, later on, you'll understand that it means a lot in your spiritual life. As they took it from him, I wanted to cry out, how can this happen? I was so scared that he would see me. I even saw some old sisters who were prophets come and take stuff from Satan. Even these sisters, with the gifts of the Spirit, fought over this stuff from Satan, one on top of the other. As he came to each one, he patted them on the shoulder and they nodded back in agreement. However, he just wants their souls. I don't know why they didn't see his face. The narrow road. It was so painful for me to see this that I started crying. When I saw all these people I felt so sorry for them. They were walking slowly to the edge of hell. Some of them were at the beginning and some were at the edge. When I walked on this road, I hadn't noticed the small path going off from this road. This path was so narrow that there was only room to fit a person's two feet, side by side, next to each other. On both sides of the road appeared something like fog. When Satan came near two sisters, they turned from him and went on this narrow road. They were two sisters from church in Buffalo. When they walked on this narrow road, the youth called for them to come back, but they continued walking single file. It was too narrow to walk together. Many who walked on further didn't notice this small road anymore. It took a long time for Satan to give out all these adornments to everyone. Then he came back and noticed me. I stood on the edge of hell with two people the angel and Jesus. The angel stood close to me with his hand on my shoulder. When Satan came back, he looked at me very hard and evil. I was so scared when he came to me. He tried to pat me on my shoulder, but couldn't because the angel's hand was on me. He walked closer to me and said pridefully, huh, for a long time I've wanted your soul. I started crying and said, no, you'll never get my soul. The angel stood in silence. I screamed, no. I'll never give you my soul. Satan opened his mouth and said, The word of God says, Any kind of man's clothing on a woman is an abomination to God. What could I say when he said this from the word of God? I had heard this many times before from old brothers and sisters. However, I listened to another voice on earth who said, It's not a sin. It's not a sin to have adornments. Wear pants. The pastor's wife does. If it's okay for others, it's okay for you too. There is a sister who sings in the choir and wears pants, so it's not a sin. Today Satan offers this now, but later on, he will say, the word of God says such and such. I didn't know how to escape this situation. I knew I was lost. I knew I was guilty of everything. In this place, I couldn't say, I want to find the pastors who stumbled me or the brothers and sisters who stumbled me. Right now it was just me and my life. Now this voice Satan rebuked me. I had heard this voice of warning many times before, but I didn't obey and I didn't listen to the word of God. My parents had told me many times to do good. My father was a very good, kind man. He asked me many times not to wear makeup and pants. He told me to have my clothing in order when I went to church. Admonition to youth. Youth in regards to you, I beg of you to honor your parents. You know I'm young, but I didn't honor my mom and dad. Oh, I respected them, but I didn't honor them and the Bible says, honor your parents. If you want to have a good life you must honor your parents. The Bible teaches that even when your parents become senile you still need to honor them. But brothers and sisters, our parents aren't senile and yet we don't honor them. I would give anything to have back the years that I didn't honor them. I would care about my mom if I could do my life over. My mom warned me, but I wouldn't listen to her. For the rest of my life, I will regret that I didn't listen to her. When I had an opportunity to honor my parents, I didn't. Instead, I raised my voice against them and sometimes yelled at them, but the Bible says this is a sin. I see old brothers preaching a lot, but all of the youth just sit by. Young men, you need to fear. If the young brothers just sit there and an old brother, who can hardly stand, goes and preaches, then you need to be in fear, young brothers. God asks you to preach. Stand up. Come here and take the word of God and preach. When you fast and pray, you'll never raise your voice against your parents. What she experienced further. When I was standing on the road at the edge of hell, I thought I would never come back to earth. Oh, how the fire crackled. I was trembling and scared when Satan spoke these words to me. 
Here I stood helplessly, but when I was on the earth I was prideful. However, brothers and sisters, when you find yourself there, your pride disappears. When Satan looks at you and your tears are flowing, you will be sorry for every minute of your life that you didn't dedicate to God. I want to call you all to give your life to the Lord. I heard the same call to give my life to the Lord many times, but I heard another voice crying to the Lord to always give mercy to me. It asked, give mercy, but the Lord says, I am holy. There is no darkness in me. Eight souls were lifted out from hell to speak with Olga. I tell you, I saw the eight souls whom God brought up from hell. I wasn't in hell, so please don't add to this and say that I was in hell. I was on the edge of hell. I saw eight souls that were lifted out from hell. These souls explained to me why they were in hell. I can tell you about four of them, but I cannot tell you about the other four. The Lord will show me the depths of hell. After this, I can tell you about the other four souls. The first soul in hell. I was standing there crying. It is my nature to have a cold personality, but there I was crying. When I heard these voices in hell, I felt great pain. The first soul I saw come up from hell was a young brother. I knew him personally in Russia. He was 25 years old when he died in a car accident. After he died, there were people who had a vision or prophecy that he was going to heaven, but he didn't. He was in hell instead. He started to tell me about how and why he went to hell. I think this will be a big encouragement to the young brothers. I want to warn all you young people. If you promise something to each other you have to keep it. If you promise and don't do it, you will be guilty, then the Lord will require it from your hands the same as he required it from this brother. He was young and preached in Siberia. He traveled and built three churches in Siberia. He was very strong in the faith. One time when he came back to Ukraine from Siberia, he started working with the youth there. He was traveling and had an evangelistic outreach. During this time he had a desire to get married. He wanted to find a Christian sister for his wife, so he went to a city and found a sister. He started getting acquainted with her. He told me from hell that they sinned together. This sister conceived a baby and, for some reason, they didn't have a wedding ceremony. She started to show. When the church elders noticed it, they started to investigate. They tried to find out who the father was. The sister told them that it was this brother. Everyone was shocked and wouldn't believe it, because they thought he was a strong believer. He denied it and said she was lying about him and that it wasn't true. When they prayed about it, there was a prophecy or revelation given which said that she was lying and that it wasn't true about this brother. So they excommunicated this sister, but he could still be a preacher. He traveled and sang. Now he witnessed to me in hell that, at the time, he knew he was in sin. However, he didn't want to shame his father, because his father was a pastor, an elder. He said that what he did bothered him and made him miserable. The Lord called me to repent and go back to this sister and receive her. Because I had sinned with her, I had promised her before that I would marry her. However, I didn't fulfill this. I didn't want to be ashamed before others. After this, a short time passed, and the tears of this sister cut off my life. He went to hell because he didn't repent. This is the first person I saw. He was 25 years old. You know, he spoke with lots of fear and said, I think God will take me from here. Then I will go and preach and say the truth and be a good man. I'll find this sister. He spoke like this. People in hell are full of false hope. He knew my name, but he called me, soul, and said, why did you come here? You've had more chances to repent than I. Why did you come here? In hell, there are no hypocrites. They don't speak to tickle people's ears. They speak the exact truth. That was the first person I saw there. The second soul in hell. The second person that I saw was a sister. You knew this sister at the church she is now speaking to personally before in Russia. She was a prophet. She was a sister in Christ, but I saw her in hell. I'll explain why she went to hell. I don't know how prophecy and revelations operate here. But if you're a chosen vessel with gifts and you've heard the voice of the Lord before, if the Lord speaks one word, don't add and speak two words. I beg of you brothers and sisters, be careful when you say, Thus saith the Lord, for you will answer to God for this, like this sister lost her eternal life with God. She was chosen by God to be a prophet and she heard the voice of God, but she started to want more from God, so she started to add to God's words. 
For example, the Lord spoke to her about and for someone else. However, she would add something. The Lord spoke to her about this and said, Soul, you can't do this. For you to continue doing this is a sin. This is not my will. However, she wouldn't obey. One time later, she wanted to have the gift of casting out demons or raising the dead back to life and healing. However, God told her, I gave you a gift to work with my people and you are not to add words. However, she wouldn't listen to this. She wanted more glory for herself and kept adding words. She loved it when people praised her. She loved it when there were miracles through her. Therefore, people would say, this is a great sister. She was popular. She was over 50 years old and I remember when I was at a meeting in her house in Ukraine. I came with everyone to her house for a meeting and we found her dead. No one could understand why, but now I saw her in hell. She explained to me why. Brothers and sisters, I knew this sister. When she explained this to me, she was so regretful. She said, soul, I'll come back to earth. I believe the Lord will return me back to earth. Then I will say the truth and witness. I will never add something. I knew God. Why did I do this? These were in the fire, not in the smoke like I was. They were in the fire. She was crying so much. I felt so sorry for her. I thought my heart would never make it. She witnessed to me why she went to hell. She heard the voice that had warned her many times not to add words, but she didn't obey. That's why she went to hell. When she started asking for more manifestations, God said, just pray. However, she didn't obey this. The time before she died, she was kneeling in her house before the meeting was to start. She kneeled and said, Lord, I think Satan has more power than you. She said, because Satan gives everything to his servants right away, power and manifestations, but you have less power than Satan. The Holy Spirit said, take me away from this soul. So God took his Holy Spirit from her, suddenly. Satan immediately killed her body and took her soul. She could only stand up, lay on her bed and die. Brothers and sisters, don't speak against God. This sister spoke against God only once, and she went to hell. I tell you again, vessels of God when the Lord speaks through you, and he says one word, don't say two. The third soul in hell. The third person that came from hell was a sister too. She did many good deeds in her life. This is what she explained to me. When she was alive, she always gave up everything that she had, even if it was her last possession. Even if she had to go hungry for three days, she would give and not regret it and this pleased God. I saw a list of all her good deeds. She was full of good deeds, but on this page, I saw that all her good deeds were crossed out. I couldn't understand why, but she explained why they were. When she did her good deeds, she would go and tell other people, witnessing about all her good deeds. She wanted people to praise her. When she shared them with others, the Lord crossed the deed out. She came before God as unfruitful. She wasn't in adultery nor did she have any big sins. She was only unfruitful, without fruit. When she came before God as unfruitful, she knew she was going to hell. The Lord had warned her not to do this. He told her to, make sure your right hand doesn't know what your left is doing. Also that the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. She knew she was wrong. She heard God's voice, but she didn't obey. She was pleased when others spoke well of her. All her good deeds were for nothing. I tell you she had no other sins. She just came unfruitful. I call you my friends to go work to bear fruit. It's very important because even if you're a good Christian and you don't do any evil, but you just sit in the background as unfruitful, you need to know that your end is hell. In heaven, there are no unfruitful people. The fourth soul in hell. The fourth person I saw was a brother. He had been an elder pastor, at the time a car hit and killed him. He was 38 years old. I don't know what you believe, but I don't care. I will relate to you what this soul explained to me when I saw him. I want to pass it on to you. It's your business how you receive it. This elder was an elder of a church that the Lord loved. It wasn't a big church. The Lord sent a prophet to them and said to this elder, I want this church to be fulfilled in teaching. This elder didn't understand what it meant and the Lord sent this prophet again and said, I want you to have communion in the right way. I have never been in a church before where people washed feet and I never thought it was important, but when the Lord revealed this to me, I felt sorry about my past. This elder didn't do foot washing in his church. 
He was against it because his father had taught him that it wasn't important. When his father died and he became the elder, he didn't think it was important. However, the Lord sent his prophet who said, you have to do this because it's a commandment. However, this elder started to argue with the prophet. The prophet said, brother, the Lord said this. Many times the prophet came to this elder and warned him. The elder told him, in my church, I'm the ruler. The prophet said, brother, don't talk that way. The Lord said this. However, the elder said, I'll tell you again, I'm the ruler in my church, and defended himself. The Lord sent this prophet once more to warn this man, but this man was very stubborn and said, this is how my father taught me and I understand the same way. He had started to lose his love for this prophet, but the Lord had given him a chance to repent, but he refused. One day he was walking along the street. As he was crossing the street, a car hit and killed him. He went to hell because he said, this is my church. I'm the ruler. Brothers and sisters, pay attention to the voice of God, to what he speaks to your heart. It's not my business to teach you, but I tell you that this soul is in hell, because he said he was the ruler. When the Lord tells you to do something once, go and do it. If you don't do what he asks, he will require it from your hand. At least three opportunities to repent. All of these souls in hell told me that they were given three opportunities to repent. As their voices were fading away, I heard them from far away saying, No. We had more than three chances to repent. Final exhortations. It's only a few hours until the end of this day. How have we started this day? Did we pray? The Lord revealed this to me, that some of you came here just because you were curious. I see your faces and feel sorry for you because so many of you don't even pray anymore. Brothers and sisters, you need to know that prayer is power. I don't want to see it when the Lord starts to whip you. Another vision. Two weeks ago I had a vision. I saw a road and I saw people standing in line. I saw Jesus and Satan. One, Jesus spoke, those who are thieves, leave here, and then I saw many people start to move away. Two, who is a murderer, leave here, and many started to move from the line. I recognized these people's faces. They moved away from this line and they were believers. Three, who doesn't have peace in his heart, move away. More and more people started to move away. Oh brothers and sisters, only around 25 people were left standing in line. Second vision. When this vision was gone I saw another vision. I saw a sifter and hands that held this sifter. Inside the sifter, I saw a mound of wheat. It was heaped up above the rim of the sifter. When I saw this I thought, oh, this is good. There's a lot of wheat. But then I saw the sifter start to shake, and I noticed that all the wheat fell to the earth together with the chaff. They fell because they were empty inside. When I looked inside the sifter, there were only about 25 kernels left. These kernels were full. They didn't fall through the screen because they were big enough to stay. I heard these words, it's finished. Harvest has come. My dear friends, we know that harvest is the end of time. Let's think about that. Exhortations. It's very hard for me to talk right now. I have lots of pain in my flesh. I look around and I see young men here. It is your place to teach, not the sisters. It's for you. It's your place to hold a Bible here. It will make your parents joyful when they see you working for God. It doesn't please God for us to come to a meeting and talk about all our earthly problems before the meeting. This is not pleasing to God. Why did God say that you don't pray? Don't you know that we have to pray? The day of the Lord is near. Destruction of cities. The Lord told me something not very long ago and I want to share this with you. Cities will be burned with fire and it will start at midnight. The Lord said to me, I will take you in spirit from here into another country. The city where you are will be burned with fire. This word also said, I will go through and search the houses of my people. I will check their doorposts. The houses, whose doorposts don't have blood on them, will I destroy. Brothers and sisters, it's not my business, but I want to ask you what do you have in your houses? It was revealed to me that in your houses, you have Satan's property as first place. There is no place for the Lord in your houses. My dear brothers and sisters, it is not my business to teach, but I do tell you that even if you spend $400 minus $500 for this private property of Satan's, throw it away out from your house. God's day is near and he will search your houses. I'm just asking you. I'm not trying to be nosy, please understand. 
I had a TV in my house before. I spent $500 on it. I feel very sorry now about the time I spent on it and the money. Back then, I didn't feel one bit sorry. I could have given that money to people who are in need. You don't think that we have any poor in America, but the Lord revealed to me that there are many poor people here. You can find them and give this money to them. Brothers and sisters, check and see what you have in your houses because you will answer before God about it. Don't try to excuse yourself by saying, I only watch Christian programs. Don't make excuses. This is the private property of Satan in your house. The Lord will come to judge this earth and your house will perish be destroyed because you have that which is cursed in your house. It is like when King Saul took spoils from the Amalekites and lost all his blessings. He had heard the voice of God before, but he couldn't hear it anymore because of this. So he went and listened to another voice, the voice of a witch. He was afraid because he couldn't hear the voice of the Lord anymore. Oh my dear souls, today you get worried because the Lord doesn't speak to you, but which of you is thinking about the time? I don't know, but maybe the Lord will move me away soon. I tell you that the day before the destruction comes upon this place, it will be very nice. It will be warm and sunshine. However, in the night, the fire will come to this city and all these cities will be on fire. Maybe you will remember what I'm telling you and you'll wake up one night because something outside is crackling. Then you will have to realize that you are perishing. But, it will be too late to ask forgiveness then. There will be a destruction because the Lord is punishing. At this time there will be no more forgiveness for anyone. However, if you stay on your knees in prayer, the Lord will come to you and say, Soul stand up and follow me. I will lead you out, but this city will be destroyed by fire. But no, don't think that you can just sleep in your nice bed and that the Lord will come and wake you up. No, it won't be like that. The Lord revealed to me that you don't pray. How many times do you wake up at night to pray? Pray for your children. Fathers and mothers, pray about your children. You think that they are Christians, but you don't know them. How many are in adultery in your church? You shouldn't think that just because they sit through church, that they're Christians. They will perish. The Lord revealed this to me. Fast and pray for them, for the youth who are perishing. My dear sisters, I don't want to point you out. However, when you come before the Lord, please cover your heads. How can you stay in God's presence with your heads uncovered? And you're not ashamed. Don't defend yourself by saying, the Lord says this is only for wives. It's not for me. Sisters, when you come before God you must cover your heads. Charismatic Church When I was backslidden I went to a charismatic church called, Chapel or Church of Praise. When I was there I sang and jumped. I feel very sorry about the time that I spent there. Brothers and sisters, if you've ever sung the song, Satan, you are under my feet, never sing it again because it is prideful. You don't know what you're doing. Even Michael the Archangel wouldn't bring this kind of accusation against Satan, but he said, the Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuked me for singing this song in New York. Think about what you are saying when you sing and what is coming from your lips. The real situation is that we are in sin and that we are under Satan's feet. However, we sing, Satan, you're under my feet, anyway. When I was healthy I could jump and clap and everything, but when the Lord touches me, I can hardly walk through this building. When the Lord touches me, it doesn't cause me to jump and clap in that kind of excitement. When I came to the edge of hell I had no desire to jump. I had lots of pain concerning my past because I had lived without God and I was perishing. Brothers and sisters, don't think that you can sin, and then come to church and sing hallelujah when you're sinking in sin. I don't know, but maybe you know some other way to eternal life. Maybe your way says that you can sin and still go to heaven. But I wasn't going to go to heaven. When I went my way, my end was hell. Lack of prayer. This is why I plead with you dear sisters when you come before God, dress in a godly dress. Don't dress in this world's dress. I don't want to be harsh with you. I am just pleading with you because if the Lord comes to you and searches your heart, you know it will be found empty. Before you came to the meetings, you didn't pray. Instead, you spent a long time in front of the mirror. Then you come to church like this and you want blessings. Repent today. Final please. Right now, as I'm finishing my talk, I can see the hearts of those who want to repent today and ask forgiveness of the Lord. 
I plead with you, my dear friends. We have a very short time left. I don't know if you understand me, but I want to totally give my life to the Lord. I ask the Lord, make these people see the glory of heaven and may they give their whole life for your glory. I don't want you to ever see hell as I did. After my experience near hell, I had to fast and pray for my health because of my pain. I can't work because of the pain. Who would hire me when I'm disabled because of this? Brothers and sisters, nobody will need you if you become disabled when the Lord touches you. However, when you were in good health, you didn't give your life to the Lord. Flee to the youth. I ask you, youth, my calling is to the youth because I'm young. I want you to give your whole life to the Lord. Then maybe things will be different in church. At work, people will start saying, you're different. Now you're the same as the world. The Lord says, be separate. What the souls in hell wish. Now I want to go back and talk about these souls that came to me from hell. I was crying and my heart wasn't even right. I wanted to come back to the earth and ask everyone to forgive me. I wanted to forgive everyone. If someone grieved me, I wanted to forgive them too, because those people in hell felt very sorry about their past. They ask for forgiveness, but they don't have any, because when they were on the earth they didn't forgive. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Matt 6 14 15 You need to love one another because today you don't love each other. You ignore each other. If you went to hell, you would be very sorry about this. In hell, everyone stays in sorrow about what they've done and everyone asks each other, Soul, you had more opportunities to repent than I. Why didn't you repent? Why did you come here? Next row. After this, I noticed that the angel and I were standing on another row. It was different from the first one. As we walked on this row, I also saw flowers. I saw a gate. It was a big gate. In me, I knew that we had to go through this gate. Before we came to the gate, the angel stood before me, face to face and said, point your finger at me. I was ashamed to do this, but the angel repeated, point your finger at me. I did this and he said, see how many fingers are pointing back at you. 3. Before you start to judge someone else, see how many fingers are pointing at yourself. Then we walked towards the gate again. When the angel stretched out his hand the gate opened by itself and I saw two people standing by this gate. They were the same height as the angel standing next to me, the same height as Christ. One of these two brothers at the gate was Ivan Antonovich Levchuk, from Ukraine. Maybe you know him. When I saw his face I recognized his face, but his body was the body of a young man, tall and nice, but his face was the face of an elderly man. He stood wearing a long white robe. The second man also had on a long white robe. They stood near the gate. Ivan had water baptized me. I wanted to yell with joy because I saw him. I wanted to call his name, but I couldn't yell. He simply nodded his head and said, Soul, give your life to the Lord. I couldn't answer him anything. Get rid of the idols. I felt as though we had to go on so we went. The gate closed behind us. When the gate slammed shut, I was immediately at my house. I found myself on my knees. I tried to get up, but I couldn't because I was in very great pain. I never felt like that before. I crawled over to the TV stand and pulled myself up. When I looked over, the angel stood by the door with his hand on the doorknob. He looked at me and said, My people, if you don't carry the idols out from your houses, you will carry your children out. If you want to pass on these words, please don't add anything to what the angel said to me. Oh. My friends, I came back to my house at 4 a.m. I had no rest until 6 a.m. after I had carried everything out from my house that was ungodly and wasn't pleasing to God. Makeup and everything had to go. I had thought that it would only take me two minutes to take everything out and repent. I tried to clean everything out in only a few minutes, but it took me two hours. I took everything out and I didn't feel sorry about any of those possessions. I called my parents and told them everything. They obeyed what the Lord said. I felt blessed. I started to pray and became broken. I started to call everyone I had grieved, hated and those that knew I hated them. I asked for forgiveness. We prayed together and I felt blessed. But the pain in my flesh is with me to this day. Oh, you, you have a free will to give your life to the Lord because many of the faces I saw on this road are still alive today. 
Today is the day. Maybe you won't have any more time. Two days ago in a Rochester, New York fellowship, we had a funeral. A boy died in an accident. He was 24 years old. Where did he go? You don't know when your life will be over, even if you're young. If your life is not with the Lord where will you go? Think and meditate about your eternal life. Where would you go if the Lord took you from this life? If he said, this is your last day, even old people will want to stay alive when they hear this call. You will start crying and ask for life. You won't want to die, because your life was not according to the word of God. Oh, my dear friends, it's up to you how you receive what I have witnessed you. I want to give my whole life to the Lord and I would like it if you would pray for me. I need this. I know the Lord will give me the fear to walk rightly before Him all my life because we have a very short time on this earth.